G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained, and today we're going to be talking about the solubility of oil. Really important to understand it for a couple of reasons. One is additive solubility, so we have to carry the additive somehow in the oil, and this will help us understand additive chemistry. One of the other reasons it's really important is a very hot topic right now, which is varnish, which plagues you know, turbine systems and hydraulic systems, and to understand how varnish deposits, you need to understand solubility. So varnish precursors are actually um, oxidation byproducts. They get solubilized into the oil, and then at some point they become insoluble and they plate out. So again, understanding the process is extremely important. All right, let's get into it. So my grandfather had this saying that he loved, which is oil and water cannot mix. You've probably heard it before. When he was saying it, he was specifically referring to me and my girlfriends. Uh, you know, the fact that they, we were too different meant that we were not compatible with each other. You've probably seen this in action. So as a maybe a primary school student, or maybe you've done it with your children, you've probably done an example where you've taken water and you've tried to pour oil into it. And what generally happens is that you get oil bubbles that coalesce, they rise to the surface, and then you get a layer of oil which sits on top of the water. So when we say that oil and water cannot mix, what we're really saying is that like dissolves like, and oil and water are not like. In the sense that water, as we discovered in the last video, is polar and forms hydrogen bonds, whereas oil tends not to be. And when we talk about all of these things, we are talking about solubility. Now, specifically with solubility, we're talking about two things, a solute and a solvent. So a classic example would be salt and water. So you put salt crystals into water and they dissolve, right? Solve as in solute and solvent. And so you've probably done that before. But in the case of oil and water, that's a little bit different. Because it's two liquids going together, we generally term that miscibility. It's the same physical process, but today we're going to focus on solubility. And solubility is all about bonds. Now, in the previous video on intermolecular bonds, we talked about nonpolar bonds and polar bonds, and how polar can then be divided into roughly hydrogen and polar bonds as well. We talked about the fact that it is electrical interaction between molecules that's really important. And as we go from ion-ion to ion-dipole interactions through to London dispersion interactions, that the bond strength decreases because the electrical activity is not as high. So going back to our example of salt and water, Solute is salt, solvent is the water, and we have two very different kinds of molecules. So one is ionic, the other one is polar that forms hydrogen bonds. So how does one dissolve another? So I want you to imagine what a salt crystal looks like, and it would have water all around it. In order for water to be able to pull one of the sodium or chlorine ions off this crystal, it needs to be able to overcome the attractive forces between the sodium and the chlorine. So you can imagine if a water molecule approaches, remember that the hydrogens are positively charged. And so what it wants to do is to interact with the negatively charged chlorine. If it has enough energy to do that, it can pull that chlorine off, which will then be surrounded by other water molecules. And this is what helps to solubilize, which is a bit of a funny word, but that solubilizes that chlorine ion. If we do that many, many, many times over, we can eventually dissolve that salt crystal. But that action gives us a few clues. So first of all, the fact that water is so uh, polar and has a pretty decent amount of charge on it, that is very helpful in trying to dissolve that salt molecule. It also gives us a clue into why solvency increases with temperature. Because you can imagine temperature is really a proxy for kinetic energy. 
So as the water molecules gain more energy, their interactions with the salt molecule have higher energy and the interactions with the salt molecule are more frequent. That helps us dissolve the salt molecule much faster. Now, if we contrast this with, let's say, for example, standard hydrocarbon, the hydrocarbon doesn't really have any electrical activity to be able to help it pull off one of those sodium or chlorine items. So remember that oil molecules, when they're nonpolar, can only rely on London dispersion forces. And in comparison, those are very weak. They are, in fact, kind of the bottom of the food chain when it comes to uh, interactive forces. So the, the difference between uh, ion ion and a London dispersion forces is too great and that means that the oil is not able to effectively pull off those ions. So now that we have a good understanding of the differences between how water solubilizes salt and how oil would try to solubilize salt, we can try and answer the question, so what kind of solids do dissolve in oil? Now, ultimately, it's going to be solids which only have London dispersion forces. So that effectively means non-polar molecules, or at least molecules that have a non-polar component to them. So if you remember, detergents are generally made of two sections. There's a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end, and the uh, hydrophobic end, which is the oil-loving portion, is non-polar. So it has a non-polar tail that enables it to be taken up by the oil. But that's not an entirely complete answer because water is always the same. If I take a, a glass of water, casting aside you know, minerals and salts and things like that, but actual H2O is the same no matter where I go in the world. So I can describe its solvency extremely well. Oil is a little bit different because oil is not a single thing. Oil is really a name for a whole class of different molecules. And I'm only listing the lubricating oils here. You've got to think of oils as in crude oil, vegetable oils, synthetic oils. So there's a range of different things. And specifically with those that we use for lubrication, PAGs, esters, alkylated naphthalenes, group one to three mineral oils and PAOs, we have a kind of a hierarchy for how polar they are. PAGs at the top and PAOs at the bottom. So what this says is that the solubility of oils is going to be dependent on their polarity. And as we go further down the group, they become less polar and it's much more difficult to solubilize solids in them. All right, so I hope that's been a, a good quick explainer for solubility. In the next video, I'll go through miscibility, which is liquid and liquid interaction. All right, this has been Lubrication Explained.